Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the max area of island problem. Given a non-empty 2D array grid of zeros and ones, an island is a group of ones representing land connected four directionally, horizontal or vertical. You may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. Find the maximum area of an island in the given 2D array. If there is no island, the maximum area is zero. So here they give you an example. Example 1. So here the maximum area is 6. As you can see, this island has area 1, 2, 3, 4. This one has area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this one here has area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is the island that has the biggest area. So the method returns 6. So this is an island because all the ones are connected um, horizontally or vertically. They have to be connected in those four directions. Example two, all these are zeros. That means that this is all water. So the method returns zero. There is no island. So how can we solve this problem? We can solve this problem in two ways. We can use DFS or BFS, depth first search or breadth first search. We can use depth first search using recursion and the stack implicitly, or we can use depth first search using the stack explicitly without recursion. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do it recursively. So we're going to use DFS, depth first search. So what we have to do is iterate through the matrix, and for every point ij that we find, we have to start the DFS from that point and we count how many ones we see that are connected in those four directions up, down, left and right and as we traverse recursively doing DFS we keep the count and we count how many ones we find and then we return it back to the main function, to the main method and then we update the max that we have if we find that this new island is bigger than the max that we had before, we update the max variable. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. First, I'm going to check the input. So if grid equals equals null or grid that length equals equals zero or grid sub zero that length equals equals zero, I just return zero because the input is invalid. So the reference is null, or there are no rows, or there are no columns. Then I will have a variable max, gets the value of zero. And then this will be my final result. So I will iterate through the matrix. So for integer i, gets the value of zero, i is less than grid that length, the number of rows, plus plus i. For integer j, gets the value of zero, j is less than grid, so by that length, that means the number of columns for this row, plus plus j. And then every time I need to update my maximum, so I will say, I will say max gets a value of mass, that max of the previous max I had found before, or this new area. So calling my helper method DFS, pass the grid for position ij. And at the end, I will return the maximum area. So return max. So as you can see, every time that I find the area, this is the area for uh, starting a position ij, I have to check if this area is bigger than the maximum area that I found before. If that's the case, I update my maximum result, my maximum area. So then I will write the recursive method down here, the DFS. So private void, I'm going to have private integer DFS is going to take a two-dimensional array of integers, um, the grid, and it's going to take position i and position j. And then I will say if i is less than zero or i is greater than or equal to grid that length, to grid that length here, or j is less than zero or j is greater than or equal to grid, so by that length, or grid sub i sub j equals equals zero. That means that this is water. I just return zero. So 
these conditions here check if I'm out of bounds. So if I'm out of bounds, um, I will return zero because I have no land. And also, if I see a zero at this position IJ, this is water. So I return zero because I, ha I have no land. Then, if I get down here, that means that I have found land, so I have to add it. But before before I add the land to my final area, to the, to the area, I want to mark this position IJ to be zero because I don't want to count it again. So I will say agreed, sub I, sub J, gets the value of zero. Then I can return one for this for this one that I found, for instance, as I'm traversing, I find this one here, so this is land. So I return one for one land, plus DFS greed I minus one J. So I have to go up searching for more land, plus DFS greed I plus one J. So I have to go down searching for more land, plus DFS greed I J minus one. I also have to go to the left searching for more land and plus DFS greed I J plus one so I also have to go to the right searching for more land so that covers the four directions I have to recurse or have to traverse in order to find more land that means that they are connected horizontally or vertical or vertically so I will run the code all right I will submit the solution this is working perfectly, 2 milliseconds faster than 100% of Java submissions for this problem. So the time complexity is big of m times n, where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns. The space complexity is also big of m times n, where m is the number of rows and n is the number of, is the number of columns. As you can see in this example, I'm actually using the same input to mark, but sometimes you don't want to modify the, the input itself. So you use a separate matrix to mark. So that's why the, the space complexity in that case would also be big O of m times n. In this case, I'm just using the original, the original input matrix. If you like this video, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.